Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sur and the Kodan Armada. Get ready. Prepare for blast Your Fortress of Solitude. Greetings, program. Glad you're alive. Your Sanctum Sanctorum. The system is futile. Welcome. This should be the first triumph. This is where the fun begins. Proof positive that geeks have inherited the earth. It's showtime. It's time to get your geek on. You complete me. With Dave Gramellion. Ah, yes! I am back, San Antonio! Back from Denver, back from the Denver Comic Con. I am Dave Gramellion. Welcome to Get Your Geek On, powered by Southtown Games on Pleasanton Road near Loop 410 on the south side of San Antonio, where your gaming family wants to welcome you. Here we will talk Star Wars, Star Trek, DC, Marvel, video gaming, really all things geek that have dominated this little world of ours. You see, geek is not what it was 20 or 30 years ago. Geek is in. Geek is very in. Geek is now the mainstream, and we are here to talk the latest and greatest that is geek right here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio and 9.30 a.m. The Answer dot com. This is Season 2, Episode 4. And tonight we are going to start off with actually a little bit of sad news. Uh, Stanley's wife uh, passed away on Thursday. We want to be able to recognize that. And then we'll pick it up, I promise. We'll have some good news to talk about. i got a lot of show news that I want to get into upon my triumphant return from the Denver Comic Con. Star Wars news. Of course, here's something that never, ever makes the news anymore. I mean, who pays attention to Star Wars? Didn't that come out like in 1977 or something 70 like that? Why are we still talking about it? Came it came back in the 20th Movie. century. Yeah, so there was 20th a, century. A couple I of could. sequels. Oh, geez. Whatever happened to that guy Harrison Ford? Whatever happened to ah, that guy? Nothing, nothing big, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. If you want a copy of The Last Jedi script... We're going to tell you where you can get it, how much it'll cost you, and who autographed it, and exactly how much I think about it. Forces of Destiny has finally arrived, and it it laid an egg. (laughs) We'll be talking about that as well. Got some Marvel news. Spider-Man Homecoming is out, and not everybody's happy about it. We'll be talking about that coming up as well. There's some Guardians 3 news, as well as some Guardians 2 news to get into. And the Jetsons. Dear God. Yes, indeed. There are rumors wow. flying about about a Jetsons live action reboot. Yeah, might as well um, hold your ears in before your head explodes. We'll be talking about that. We have some DC news as well, including how you can get a hold of 30 films in one collection. I'm sorry, what now? Yeah, we're going to make Goose very happy. That'll be at the uh, after the bottom of the hour news break. And which movie will be the biggest movie of 2017 not named Star Wars? We'll get into that discussion and more coming up. So, with that being said, let me make sure that I have everything I need in order to run the premier talk radio show for geeks across the United States. First, if I'm going to talk for an hour, do I have something to drink? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's covered. Also, I like to keep a back scratcher on hand because, well, it's very, very comfortable. It helps me get that one spot in the middle of my back that you can never, ever reach. There you go. Also, I got to make sure that I have with me Old Blue, my Hasbro lightsaber from the days of yore, keeping the Minox at bay. Thank you. And, of course, if you're going to be a geek, you better have a sonic screwdriver. Thank you, Doctor Who. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Uh, so let me go ahead and introduce my crew here. I am, like I said, Dave Grimillion. I am your ever so humble host here on Get Your Geek On. To my left, your right, as you look across the radio dial, you will see the founder and the current leader of Star Wars Society of San Antonio. He is our minion. He is Peter Gonzalez. Hey, my loyal crickets are here. Thank you very much. I think there's only one cricket left. I think it's so. just the one. Yeah, it's just the one left. Mm-hmm. And what, what are you rocking there? What, what is your geeky choice of apparel? I have my Millennium Falcon, red, white, and blue. Outstanding. And as you look uh, further on my left, your right across the radio dial, you will see our sound prognosticator, the man running the board. He is Goose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're too kind. Really, really. Just too kind. It helps to run the soundboard. It really does. Goose, what are you rocking there? Well, this Tuesday night here at the in San Antonio at the AT&T Center, I'm going to my first ever professional wrestling event, Ooh. SmackDown Live. Nice. And the shirt I am wearing today is 
probably one of my favorite sports entertainers because he's now with WWE, and that is from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 216 pounds. He is the phenomenal AJ Styles. Wow, if I knew who that was, I'd be totally impressed. <laughs> I'm waiting for. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. No. Yeah. And I'm also. I'm wearing my uh, CLG, my Counter Logic Gaming red hat. The red is for the ladies of CLG. And I'm also wearing my 8-bit San Antonio Spurs old school T-shirt. So we are. We are set. We are good to go. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. First, uh, a little bit of business get out of the way, and then we'll get to the good stuff. First, we do want to send out our condolences uh, to Stan Lee, his wife Joan. Passed away on Thursday at the age of 93. 93 years old. I believe Stan's 95. So, I mean, that's... It, it's very sad, but at the same time, it's very uplifting that they have lived this long. And I mean, they've been married for a very long time. Something 60-something years? 68? I yeah, think, I think he married her right after World War II. I think so. So we want to send our condolences right. out to Stan Lee and the passing of his wife. Uh, SciFest here in San Antonio is going on. Let's well, we'll pick up the mood here a little bit. And we are at SciFest tomorrow. Yay. 1 o'clock mm -hmm. Sunday afternoon. We'll be doing a panel right there on the main stage. We'll be taking your questions. We'll be, taking, we'll be giving snarky answers and responses, I'm sure. We'll be mm -hmm. talking about geeky media in general since we are here on talk radio. Uh, we'll talk podcasts, we'll talk YouTube, we'll talk social media, we'll talk about branding and how to get your name out there as well. That'll be 1 o'clock there at SciFest, which is always a lot of fun. We went last year as well. Right. We covered it, and, and it's always a good time. That's run by Lori Gonzalez down there at the Wonderland Mall of the Americas in San Antonio on Loop 410 and I-10. Pretty much it's kind of like right there where that Dave & Buster's is. Alrighty. Uh, Amazon Prime Day. This is always a lot of fun. It's starting to get closer to Christmas, but you're not really thinking about it just yet. Yeah. So this is where Amazon Prime comes in. I'm an Amazon Prime member. All right. This is not an endorsement or anything. Don't don't think that. I'm just I just happen to be a member. And Amazon Prime Day is where they offer a bunch of sales and you know, they slash a bunch of prices for Amazon Prime members. However, we are an Amazon affiliate. And that means that you can go to our website, getyourgeekon.org. You head down to the sponsors area where all of our lovely sponsors are, thank you all, and you'll see links to various Amazon products and services. And even if you don't shop there, even if you don't buy those products and services, that's fine. All you have to do is just click on the link, do your normal shopping anyway, and we get a little bit of a nod from Amazon. Now, how much? Well, it, of course, it varies. When you get so many clicks, you get so much, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details because we'd be here forever. Needless to say, if you're going to do shopping on Amazon, on Amazon Prime Day, we ask that you go to our website first, getyourgeekon.org, find the sponsors area a little ways down, and just click. That's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to buy anything. Just you know, give us a little click. It's all that down. sounds simple enough. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Speaking of which, uh, we also have a, an official deal set up. I teased this a uh, month or so ago. Uh, this was in the works, but now it's official. It's in stone. You can do this right now. You can go to rippedapparel.com, R-I-P-T apparel.com. Shirts, hats, ladies, men's. Uh, it's all geeky apparel, and it changes. You can go there at, at different times during the day, and they'll have different products up there. And now you can get 10% off your order by using the code GYGO. It stands for Get Your Geek On. G if we use the code Get Your Geek On, come on, this is a fast world, and we don't have time to type all that out. So the code GYGO gets you an automatic 10% off any order at rippedapparel.com. I'm looking forward to shopping there myself, actually. <laughs> this is actually a code that even Minion and Goose can use. Woot. Usually when we do our giveaways, y'all are completely ineligible. There's, sorry, there's just nothing we can do. But for this one, y'all can get 10% off instantly at RippedApparel.com using Very the code nice. G-Y-G-O. Sweet. All right, so we have a guest. Next week. Next week. That's correct. Southtown Games will be coming up here uh talking about, I believe they're going to talk about the uh, Magic the Gathering tournament that they have. And then I was also contacted by somebody in the, in the media regarding the 30th anniversary of Star Trek The Next Generation, which is coming up in September. And so I've been reaching out, and someone reached back out to me and said, hey, 
can we get someone on your show next week? I said, well, you know, a little early, but sure. I mean, you know, no problem. Who is it? And uh, they said, all right, so your special guest is going to be Marina Sirtis. This is no time to argue about time. We don't have the time. She's going to make the time for us. Marina Sirtis will be calling into this studio next week to talk Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, I can't help but make the comparison to Star Trek Discovery because nobody really liked Star Trek The Next Generation when it came out back in 1987, for those of y'all who don't remember. And people are not exactly thrilled about Discovery now. However, how can I let Marina Sirtis be in studio and not talk about what it was like to be on the set of Next Generation? Yeah, so when you when you told me that, there's only one thing that popped into my head. Go for it. Yeah, Goose actually almost fell out of his chair when I told him. And there is a chat going on right now. If you're listening to us on the radio, we do appreciate it. But on Thursdays, we actually run a chat on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash official. And in our chat, Steve Schinder says, make it all about insurrection. Yes. Why would I want to make it yes. about one of the worst Star Trek movies? Why would I want to do that? Because insurrection's not one of those. Besides, didn't she have a bigger part in First Contact? Uh, if, if any movie we talk about, it would be First Contact or Nemesis. No, we're not talking about Nemesis. Well, then it'd be First Contact. All right, so that narrows it down well, right she, there. We could talk about you know, Generations and how she crashed the Enterprise into a planet. Uh, all right, let, let, let's, let's not do this. They're going to start to reconsider and be like, Psh, I'm not bringing her on this show. Forget it. But no, Marina Sirtis will be calling in next week to discuss the 30th anniversary of Star Trek, The Next Generation. All righty. So with that being said, I think it's uh, ready to go ahead and dive into the news proper here. Let's go ahead and talk some Star Wars news here, shall we? I'm looking forward to completing your training. In time, you will call me the master. All righty. So, an auction was held recently in the United Kingdom, as tends to happen from time to time. Just across the pond. And this was an original set prop that they auctioned off. Now, okay. I, I know what you're thinking. This is the, the land of Pam Rose, Jeremy Bullock, David Prowse. So, what are we talking about an original set prop here? Okay, well, it was a prop made out of metal and fiberglass. It is from the original trilogy, and it was auctioned off for a staggering $2.75 million. So it's not sitting at your house. It's not at my house. Uh, that's 2.1 British million pounds for anyone who wants to do the math there. So so what was it? All right, so for $2.75 million, uh, was it Mark Hamill's lightsaber? No. Was it Darth Vader's lightsaber? No. Millennium Falcon prop? How cool would that be? No. No, instead, $2.75 million was chalked up for the original R2-D2. Ooh. Thank you very much, Minion. The original R2-D2. So that uh, officially takes fourth place all time as far as props that were sold at auction that's sitting behind the Aston Martin that James Bond used in Goldfinger. I, I, I can see paying some serious money for that Aston Martin. That was a really sweet car. So R2-D2 now belongs to a private collector, $2.75 million. I'll just be happy with my little one that I picked up over here at a flea market. And plus he makes little noises too. <laughs> I'll take it. That'll work. Mm -hmm. uh, the autograph selling site, Movie Script Zone. I came across this. I found this to be rather interesting. Uh -oh. They have a script. For the upcoming Episode 8, The Last Jedi movie. And they're selling it. All right, now, first of all, the idea that they would even have a script for The Last Jedi, that right there is staggering. That's mind blowing. Because we've heard many times from Mark Hamill, from Carrie Fisher, from Harrison Ford, and so on about how strict they are with security. But apparently, they have one. And here's the best part is that it is autographed by the following actors and actresses. Daisy Ridley, Don the Hall Gleason, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Adam Driver, Benicio Del Toro, Tom Hardy, 
John Boyega, Andy Serkis, Peter Mayhew, and Lupita Nyong'o. Wait, Tom Hardy's going to be in the Last Jedi? Yeah, I wouldn't remember. I don't. I don't remember Tom Hardy being in the movie. That, are you sure about that? But uh, apparently, well, I know that, 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 that was not entirely sure. I'm going to go see it. Well. <laughs> He'll be Darth, he can it. be Darth Bane, but he I'm bumped. Oh, 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 so all right. So already, I'm a little suspicious. No, he's a clone of Darth Bane. Oh. I'm already a little suspicious about this because Tom Hardy signed it and the fact that they have it. But how about this? They're selling it for a total of three hundred bucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, it's, it, technically, it's two hundred ninety-nine dollars total. That's not. Now, when I read this, I'm like, oh, two ninety nine for a raffle ticket, right? And right, they're and yeah. they're gonna you know raffle. No, it, it, that's the listing. It's buy it now, two hundred ninety nine dollars, and you can own an episode nine. Wait, oh, that's right. The website actually says their own website says episode nine, the Last Jedi. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. Yeah, that, that's, there's no way this is legit. So I know we're kind of, I don't mean to cross the streams that much, but I only got really one thing to say to that. Go for it. It's a fake. Yeah, there's no way this is real. Uh, this is, it, it's, it's just too weird. It's too far out there. You mean to tell me you have a script signed by, what was that? What did I read off? 11 actors and actresses? I think it was 11. And only going for 300? And to go for 300 bucks. Give me a break. And oh. apparently it's pronounced Donald Gleason. Uh, Donald yeah, Gleason, according to uh, Stephen uh, Steve Schender, it's Don Schindler. Donald Gleason. Oh, so yeah. it's like Donald, but without. I thought it was Don the Hall. Okay, all right. Well, I, I can be I can be wrong on occasion. That's my one for the year. I'm sorry about that. So, alrighty. Uh, I just love reading little stuff like that. It, may, it makes me laugh so hard. So let's talk about Forces of Destiny. All right. So Forces of Destiny. We talked about this a few months ago when it first and the concept first came out. When the dolls came out, and and we talked we, about last week too. Yeah, well, a little bit last week, but we we had a good chuckle. But you know, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. It's about all girls in Star Wars, but okay, all right. But it's Rey and Leia, and they they pick some you know Ahsoka Tano. They pick some good ladies. Then we saw the action figures, and then we just laughed some more because they look like brats dolls. And then we saw the very first episode. Okay. <laughs> All right. First, you have to you have to separate this out. Let me stick up for the show a little bit. The problem is, is that older fans like us expect everything to come out of Lucasfilm to be grade A Marvel type of content. You want dark stories. You want epic force battles. You want something that rivals what you saw on an old Republic um, Clone Wars episode. Yeah, like a Clone Wars episode or the, the cinematic from the from the uh, old Republic video game. That's what older fans want. They're not getting that with this. So I can see where the public would be like, hey, I don't get it. What's going on? Why, why, huh? I, I, I get that. The thing is, is that Lucasfilm is addressing content for all ages. Lucas himself has said, on more than one occasion, by the way, that Star Wars is for 12-year-olds. It is. And oh, I, I, was, I was nine when it came out. I, I agree with that, too. I agree. It's for kids. Now, true, some of it makes you kind of wonder, like, you know, talking about space taxes and having decapitations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it is for kids. It always has been, and it should be. However, um, yeah, it's not being well-received by the fans, probably because it's not very good. At least not yet, anyway. On its first day, it received 400,000 views. On, on Disney's YouTube, which is which is good. I like that. More than what we get. 27% of all the votes were thumbs down. Just that's 27%? Only 27%. So that's more than one in four. And I got to say, if we're going to... I don't want to get into the whole, you know, EU, you know, you destroyed my childhood and, and ruined my stories. And now you're giving us this non... I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to judge the show based on its own merits. Is it a good story? Are the characters good? Is the voice acting good? Does it, are, they, are they funny? These are shorts. They're not even three minutes long. Give me a break. How much action can you cram into three minutes anyway? Well, if you're Michael Bay, I you know, can see that. <laughs> so, all right, so let's look at this. All right, so the beginning of the, this is the first episode. I know there have been others since then, but we're going to talk about just the first episode. 
All right, so the so what happens? BB-8 and Ray are just kind of wandering around Jakku. They're just kind of wandering around. We don't know what for. And then they come across a worm that Ray says lives by eating junk. Right there, the very premise, I'm like, it lives by eating junk? I mean, how does that work? Whoa, sandworms. You hate them, right? <laughs> I hate them myself. Yeah, it's a sandworm. It eats junk. It, Obviously, it, it has a lot in common with the average teenager. <laughs> hey oh. Well, and as I was watching that, I was just couldn't help but thinking, when is Moad Deeb going to show up? Yeah, exactly. Can we ride the sandworm? Can we, can we do that? So Ray holds the beast off somehow, and then they run in the opposite direction of where they were originally headed, and Ray yells, don't worry, we're almost home. Wait, so... But you were going that way. Now you're going the other way. Okay, I, I didn't. I didn't quite get that. So, so then Ray, for some strange reason, just kind of squints off into the distance. I get the feeling it's like she's trying to use the force or something, or she sees. I, I don't know, but it, it wasn't really made that clear. And then BB-8 gets eaten. Okay, good job. That that good job, Ray. Ray then squints again. Long, and then she throws her stick into the sand. The worm runs into the stick and then coughs up BB-8. I, I guess the force told her that it would cough up BB-8 it, if, it, if, if it hit a stick. <laughs> I, I guess. This thing is huge, by the way. It's, it's like 80 feet long or something. It hits her little two-meter stick and it coughs up the, the droid. Oh, okay. It's cartoon logic. So, so they make it back to her home, the mm -hmm. the AT-AT that she's uh, living in, and Ray throws some junk at it and says, "Oh, you must be hungry," and eats it, and it goes away. Okay, let me say this: it's not a big deal. It's a short for kids. It's a short for kids. Yes, the animation is really not the best quality they could put out. The voice acting sounds like it was done in a studio. You can tell easily that Daisy Ridley is not 110% into this. She's doing basically what we're doing. Talking into a microphone in a room, only she probably has some egg crates up there, and, and, and oh, that's so it. So that is Daisy? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they actually got Daisy to do the voice acting, but uh, seriously, will the 8-year-old care? Will the 10-year-old that is watching this on YouTube really care? The answer is no, of course not. No, instead it's going to be the 30-year-old who is, you know, looking for something. You want to find something to break this down. And I admit, you know, the more I watched it, the less I liked it too, and the more I wanted to break it down as well. Well, the, the Leia episode was kind of cute with the Ewoks. I and hadn't that, seen that one yet. That was, uh, the way I kind of look at it, well, you know, this is geared for kids, and you know, I saw the all of them so far, and they're, they're, they're cute. I mean, it's something really good for kids, and you just kind of like, Okay, cool. You know, that's how I kind of look at it. I mean, you know, having grown up with the original trilogy, you know, you were hungry for anything. It was just like one Marvel comic book a month, and then you had to wait. Can you imagine if droids came out today? Or the Ewok Adventures? I don't want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those were better than the holiday special. So. Well, well it, it's it's the holiday special. Though. I mean, come on Broadcasting now. and whoa, whoa, distributed whoa, 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 worldwide whoa, 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 on the whoa, whoa, Westwood whoa, whoa, One whoa, 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 XDS satellite platform. What was that? It was something. That Oops. was something completely different. Yep. Oops. So, but if, if, if droids or Ewok Adventures came out today, they'd be absolutely shredded. And to be honest, yeah, they weren't the best, but we were eight at the time. You know, have you ever gone back and you've actually watched the old Ninja Turtle cartoon? Not lately, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're not really good episodes as far as story goes. But it's the Ninja Turtles. It's, it's, you know, they're made for kids. Geared, all this is geared towards kids. And, you know, if it, if it gets some kid or even some little girl even more in tune to Star Wars, and this way they can gateway into all the other nerdy things that are out there, I say I'm all for it. Now, the argument, of course, the counter argument to that is, well, yeah, well, the Clone Wars were for kids and they were awesome. Yeah, but that was also pretty much all that you had going on. Disney has so many things going on in the Lucasfilm pot right now that, of course, not everything is going to be gold. I hate to break it to you guys. Not everything is going to be the most mind-blowing, earth-shattering thing you've ever seen. Get over it. I'm really tired of people seeing something that I agree is not 
the best thing that Lucasfilm could have put out there and just shredding it to pieces. It's not for a 35-year-old sitting in his mom's basement. Nope. Get out of your mom's basement, go get some sun, and realize that it's not for you. Go find some. Go watch the Clone Wars. That is for you. This Forces of Destiny is not for you. So with that being said, ah, it, just really, it just really drives me up the wall how everybody... Star Wars fans are so self-centric, they think everything is, is for them. Yeah, they're turning into Trekkers. Not for you. No, 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 no. Shut it's, your it's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up after the bottom of the hour news break, we will get into some Marvel news, some DC news, and which movie will be the biggest movie of 2017 not named Star Wars. We'll be right back here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer and 9.30 a.m. The Answer dot com. Hi, this is George Newbern, the voice of Superman, and you're listening to Get Your Geek On, 930 AM, The Answer. Big thanks to George Newbern, the voice of Superman himself. Met him at the Denver Comic Con. Fantastic guy. Great guy. Very happy that he was able to do that little bit of a voiceover for us here. All righty, so... If you missed the first half, you, that's no problem. You can always find it on our archive, which you can find at 930amtheanswer.com, or on our website, which is getyourgeekon.org. It is loaded every single week. And that way you can find out who our guest will be next week. We had that announcement. And you can also find out what we had about Star Wars news and what we thought of Forces of Destiny. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into some Marvel news here, shall we? This is that sequel to the smash hit, no equal. This one for the true fans with all cans and action figures. Alrighty, this little segment is brought to you by our friends over at Laser Legend. Laser Legend is up on the north side of San Antonio between 1604 and off a of lookout road near I-35. For great laser tag fun, for party rooms, for a 4,000 square foot arcade and more, you want to check out our friends over at Laser Legend. Spider-Man Homecoming is officially out and everybody has been raving. Oh no, not everybody has been raving about it. Sorry, what? It's officially been 15 years since the first Spider-Man movie. We've had six movies in that time. Yeah. Including Homecoming. We had the three Sam Raimi, we had the two amazing... Well, they weren't that amazing. And now Homecoming. And while people are certainly flocking to go see it, and it's going to bust you know, box office records left, right, and center, not everybody's wild about it. Metacritic. Uh, I checked this out on, on Thursday. Metacritic only gave it a 73 out of 100. Wow. Hmm. The early results from IMDb users who got to see it early only gave it a 7.9 out of 10. Now, true, really? that's basically an 8. I mean, it really is. But still, you expect it, and it's... It's a Marvel movie. It's Tom Holland. It's Robert Downey Jr. You expect an 8.6 at minimum. At minimum. But what's even worse, though, is that apparently it's not a big deal with women. I looked at the breakdown here, and the breakdown says that women only gave it a 6.3. Did you, they think it was made by DC? I don't Ooh. know. <laughs> Ooh, they might have thought it was a Zack Snyder film. Oh, and even worse, women aged 30 to 44, so those are your moms, uh -huh. who were taking their kids to go see this movie, gave it a 4. Women aged 30 to 44 gave this a 4.0. Some of the reviews I saw said, quote, it's cute, but never more than that. That makes me sad. Quote, pretending this is anything other than pleasant, time-killing filler for the next Marvel Marvel is laughable. So, it looks like a really great movie. I'm sure it's a really great movie. I'm sure it is. But it may not be this tremendous, mind-blowing film that we've all come to expect from Marvel. However, there is one little... I, I guess we can call it kind of an Easter egg. Uh, Tony Stark has a new AI this time around. It, it's not just Jarvis with him. And the if you listen to the voice, if you really listen to the voice when you go see this movie... 
you might recognize it. And if you don't, if you still can't make it out, well, we got just a little hint, a little spoiler as to who it is. Through dangers untold and hardships unnumbered, I have fought my way here to the castle beyond the Goblin City to take back the child that you have stolen. Yes, the voice of Tony's AI is Jennifer Connelly. Infamously known as Betty Ross and Hulk, starring Eric Bana. Yes, but not so infamously known as, uh, I forget her character's name in The Rocketeer, but she was in The Rocketeer as well. Uh, but there you go. So Jennifer Connelly, the voice of Tony Stark's AI. In other news, Marvel News, uh, Guardians 3 made some breaking news here. Uh, not really. I'm just having a little bit of fun with you. James Gunn announced that uh, via Twitter that he narrowed down the soundtrack for Guardians 3 to only 181 songs. Only? Yeah, how about that for some breaking news there for you? <laughs> He's just having a little bit of fun because everybody loves the Guardians soundtrack. They just love it. Get such a kick out of it. But Guardians 2, it has been announced officially. This was released on Thursday. It will be the first ever 4K Blu-ray release for Disney, which I found really surprising. So Peter and I are going to your house. Pretty much, yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, pretty bring, much. Bring yep. popcorn. There you go. Um, I, I found that really surprising that Disney hadn't had a 4K release yet. Not the Avengers, not the first Guardians, not any of their Disney movies in the vault. It's this one? Okay. Uh, it's rumored to come out on August 22nd. That is not set in stone. Do not quote me on that. August 22nd is the rumored release date for a 4K Blu-ray release for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And James Gunn, uh, he put a quote out on his Facebook page about this. He said, quote, This version is a rolling cinematic river of beauty, and I've taken hundreds of hours personally making it look the best it can. Well, considering how awesome it looked in the, th in the theater. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't wait to see this on 4K. <laughs> can't wait to see it at your house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, one more little bit of Marvel news before we move on here. Kevin, did we ever figure out how to pronounce this guy's name? Faggy. Faggy? I guess. Uh, he talked to the Toronto Sun. For some reason, he won't talk to Get Your Geek On. I mean, come on, dude. And he said, quote, This original 22 movie arc ends with the Untitled Avengers in May of 2019. And then two months later, it will be Peter and Spider-Man on Ju July 5th, 2019, that will usher us into the aftermath and how things proceed from there. Okay, first of all, a 22-movie arc? Starting with Iron Man and ending with what was originally Avengers Infinity War 2. But that's... Wow. You think when they sat down, they planned out a 22-movie arc? No. I mean, that's... It was yeah, a crapshoot. <laughs> like, this might work, but it might not. I really <laughs> hope it does, because we could all use the work. <laughs> I think they got to Avengers, then got to Age of Ultron, and now they're just kind of planning it. So, it yep, so it's a 22-movie arc from 2008 to 2019. And he said Peter and Spider-Man on July 5th, but is that... Is that really the title of the movie? It's, it's me. Is, is that yeah? There you go. It's it, me. It's, it's me. It's Spidey. me. It's We're me. Be hanging out and you know getting burritos, getting and some tacos along the yeah, way. Get some street tacos because yeah, you can't get chimichangas. No, no that's Deadpool. You know that's Sony. Yeah, Sony was has some words about that's that. Okay. You know, we'll hang out. Words you know, with it, not Sony. All right. So so the arc will end in May of 2019 with the Untitled Avengers movie, and then the first movie to pick up the new arc will be July 5th, 2019. Another 22 arc, I'm sure. All righty. So, uh, as mentioned before, this is Get Your Geek On. We are powered by Southtown Games on Pleasanton Road near Loop 410 on the south side of San Antonio, where your gaming family wants to welcome you. Welcome to the 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio. This is the premier talk radio show for geeks across the United States. And let, let's talk about something a little more uh, nostalgic here. Let's talk about the Jetsons. No. Well, if it's yes. classic Jetsons, yes. Yeah, we can do that all day long. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love that show. Who didn't love that I show? I love that show. Everybody I mean, loves that show. I love the movie that came out in, like, 1990. That was, that was actually kind of cool, too. I didn't, nice. I didn't mind that one. Um, the, the funny part was I, I wish somebody would put together, and please let us know. Tweet at us at GYGO underscore official or post on our Facebook page and tell me how many times was George Jetson fired and how many times was he made vice president? 
Because those were the two alternatives. That's all, all he ever was. He was never made like a manager or, you know, senior assistant to somebody. No, he was either fired or he was made a vice president. He had his feet up on the desk most of the time. Yeah, because you know what his job was? He just pushed a button. <laughs> that's all he did because he would he complain would so about tired. <laughs> he would complain about his finger pushing button hurting. I mean, that's all he did. He pushed buttons. I so, push buttons every week. <laughs> <laughs> Basically his. There we go. So TV Line has learned exclusively that the studio, uh, this is Warner Brothers, is developing The Jetsons, a live action sitcom remake of Hanna-Barbera's beloved 60s animated series about a family residing in the futuristic outer space utopia known as Orbit City. If it ended right there, I'd be okay. But yeah. it doesn't end there. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of funny how that worked because I, I have to agree with you. If they'd stopped there and said a live-action remake, I could see that. It, it'd take place 100 years in the future, which the original series did. I could totally see that. But no, they had to go on. A Warner Brothers spokesperson has, de has declined to comment, but sources confirm that the studio, which... <laughs> They've hired Family Guy executive producer Gary Janetti to shepherd the potential series. Yeah. Oh, what could go wrong? Now they're they're going to start selling it to various uh, networks to see if they can pick it up. Jack Rapke is also rumored to be a producer on the project. He's the guy who worked on Flight with Denzel Washington. Mars Needs Moms and beowulf it's getting better by the okay, second okay so i i there's a sound clip we have that is best fitted for this all right let's 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 hear what you got good god in heaven Ruby, there are just so very many ways for me to say this to you never not in a million years absolutely not no way jose no chance lance and yet negatory mm -mm, nah, uh -uh. and of course my own personal favorite of all time man falling off of a cliff no Now, the, the big concern here, the big concern is that this is going to be more like Family Guy. It's going to be a raunchy, crude humor, that, that type of humor going on with the Jetsons. And that brings us to our question of the week. This is something I want to start doing. Facebook's kind of weird about doing polls, so I'm just going to open up to question of the week and have you uh, have comments out here. First, I want to give a quick shout out to Terry Mathis. Terry Mathis is very persistent, has been emailing her local radio station to try to get us on the air. Thank and you, I, Terry. And I want to say thank you big time, Terry, for trying to get us on the air there. All righty, so let's, uh, let's read some comments here about what people think about this live action Family Guy Jetsons possibility. Uh, David Scherzinger says... And he put little singing note quotes there. Here we go again. Why is that Hollywood no longer has any original ideas? It's all reboots and remakes and drawn out continuations. I like what Jeffrey Buss says. Jane, stop this crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. David. Corey says, terrible idea. Hollywood has truly lost the ability to have an original thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tom oh, yeah. Hollums also says it's a bad idea. It's a good idea for a live action Jetsons feature film or TV show, but a bad idea. I'm sorry. He said very bad idea to have it going in the family guy humor, sexual, violent, crude humor. No, thanks. He says. Yeah. I mean, cause yeah, the way I just kind of look at this, I mean, I mean, I mean the Jetsons were like the equivalent of the Flintstones, but they were way in the future. And it, it, it was Hanna Barbera. This was Saturday morning cartoon stuff, you know. And to put something into the vein of Family Guy, I mean, I mean, Family Guy is great, but at the same time, it's like, why? Yeah. Why and do you want to do this? A Amy Amy Grixty has a really good comment here. She says, "I like the idea a lot, except it should be a cartoon." Exactly. And instead of being like the Family Guy, make it more like American Dad. Now, this is a good point. Why are you trying to do Family Guy humor in a live action? Instead of having a cartoon version. Right. So I'm going to do a little callback. I think I know where the people who thought of this idea need to go. Oh, and where do they need to go? That would be the Sarlacc pit. Yes. That's not a bad idea. But I, need, I need you to say something before I can do that, though. Okay. What's that? Oh, that's right. You need to put them in. Ah! Yeah. Well, I need to bring that back, by the way. That's a good idea. Okay. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about, let's make Goose a happy camper and talk some DC news here, shall we? Oh, 
Okay, so uh, this is brought to you by our friends over at Southtown Games. Southtown Games is a great place down on the south side of San Antonio off of Pleasanton Road near Loop 410. This is tabletop gaming done so very well. If you need equipment, if you need boxes, if you need dice, if you need cards, you want to get some new figures, you want to learn a new game, then you want to go to Southtown Games. Minya and I have both been there. We both oh, yeah. loved it. Just loved it there. One of the things that I love about it is their staff. They're so knowledgeable. They want to help teach you these games. So, you know, a lot of times when you walk into a gaming place, you're, you're on your own. Yeah, you're on your own. You don't know where to look, right? You're like, hey, this looks kind of cool, but it also costs 40 bucks, and I don't know if I'm going to like it. I, I, I don't know. And what if it involves thousands and thousands of pieces? How do I know? Well, you can talk to these people. The staff are so knowledgeable. They will help you. They yeah. will teach you. They will even play a game with you. Yeah, because when I went to go visit them about a couple of weeks ago, Nate, who was a guest on the show, very nice. You know, yeah, what do you need? You know, he was like exactly. showing me basically everything you need to know. So that's down there at Southtown Games on Loop on uh, Southside, Loop 410 and Pleasanton Road. Hey, Goose. Yes. Uh, it appears that DC Animation went out of their way to get you some news specifically Just to make you, you happy. The DC Universe Original Movies Division of Warner Brothers Animation is turning 10. Aww. That's that, great. That's so cute. You know the first movie they ever put out? What was that? Superman Doomsday. There it is. PG-13 with Adam Baldwin as Superman. And to celebrate, they're releasing a box set of every movie and short they have made in that 10-year span. I'm sorry, what now? Every movie and short. Ooh. Every single one. Now, Goose is all, he, I mean, I, I think he's starting to, to, like, bounce up and down in his chair there. <laughs> this means 30 films, including Batman, Under the Red Hood, mm -hmm. Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, Justice League, War, Batman, The Killing Joke, as well as five animated shorts, including the upcoming Batman and Harley Quinn, and commemorative editions of Wonder Woman 2009 and Justice League The New Frontier. All of those of which are very good. Superman Unbound was a good one. I, actually, I don't think I've seen Superman Unbound yet, but there's Justice League The Flashpoint Paradox in there as well. Well, they say yeah, every, every movie. Every, every movie, one. every short, everything. DC well, animated for the last 10 years. Gonna mix up the streams again, but. In one box set. Make it so. So the DC Original Movies 10th Anniversary Collection will hit retailers on November 7th, but it will also be available on digital starting August 15th. Let's take a wild guess as to how much money this is going to cost Goose. $300. I was going to go with pretty much your entire paycheck, but you know, I mean, it's... $300. <laughs> I figure 300 would be about right. You don't need to eat for a week. It's okay. I, I would that's, actually that's go... That's not a week, sir. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go 399 Three hundred ninety nine dollars for the box set, because I figure they're going to have features and some good art and a lot of discs. So I figure you figure three hundred. I'm saying three ninety nine. Uh, minion. Well, if you know, I'm coming back to the thing about you know whether he can eat or not. If he can still get that Patreon thing, he can still have Waterburger. He's, that's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it only costs a month of Patreon. <laughs> uh, and, I, and hey, if we get to two hundred fifty dollars, I think this show should buy the box set. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It'll look really good in the mantle of my house. Uh, <laughs> all right. The 30 seconds that I'm there. <laughs> all right. So in, in the little bit of time we have left here, um, th this is our discussion portion. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let, let's talk about this. So 2017 is a lot of big movies yes. already. It's only July. It's the first week of July. So we're a little more than halfway through the year, but already we've had some monster films come out. But let's discuss which one will be the biggest movie of 2017 not named Star Wars. Now, when I'm talking big, I mean box office, because otherwise it's opinion, and the only one that matters around here is mine, so I would win. So we're talking biggest domestic box office of 2017. What would be the, the biggest, most expensive movie? At the box office for 2017, it's not fair to call it Star Wars because it's – come on. That's it's, too easy. Yeah. So let, let's – while y'all, while Goose and Minion are thinking that over, 
let me preface this real quick. Beauty and the Beast right now leads 2017 with $503 million domestic. Okay. That's huge. That's Keep in mind, this is not global box office. I'm talking only domestic for, uh, for the time being. So uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is second at $383 million. That didn't even come close to touching Beauty and the Beast. Wonder Woman is at $350 million. Logan at 226, just ahead of Fate of the Furious, which is $225 million. Uh, Y'all, I'm sure, will take a particular amount of pride. And uh, in this little note, uh, the Bayformers movie is still below Fifty Shades Darker. Oh, that just breaks my heart. I mm. love it. All right, so nominees for the biggest movie of 2017 not named Star Wars include Spider-Man Homecoming, Valerian, Blade Runner 2049, Thor, Ragnarok, and Justice League. So here's the big mm. question. Instead of thinking about, you know, which movie is going to be the biggest movie, you have to ask yourself this question. Will any movie, not named Star Wars, make more than $503 million at the box office? Yes. All right. Goose says yes, and that movie is? Justice League. You think Justice League will make more than $503 million I do. at I'm calling domestic? It. I'm, I'm saying. You're, you're gonna, calling your shot. It's going, to do a, it's going to do a run of a billion. Domestic. It's going to do a run of $750 million. Domestic. <laughs> yes. All right. Not Go, counting uh, all the times you're going to go see it. <laughs> Minion, do you, do you agree? Seven fifty <laughs> million. <laughs> you're really pushing that Patreon page there. I know, but um, I think it's a toss up between Thor and Justice League. You think Thor is a shot? I think I think Thor does have a shot because the the, the past two Thor movies were kind of okay, not bad. I have no idea what's going on here, but okay. But the, the, from what we saw in the trailer, I mean, this looks good. The trailer looks really good. <laughs> you see, I, mean, I mean, based on what we saw here, it's like man, he just lost everything, and he's fighting Hulk, and it looks really good. Okay, let, let me... And, and, and I have to say, it's, it's still a tie between that one and Justice League. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yes, there's a chance. All right, so Goose, are you doing a bit? Are you really thinking it'd be 750? I honestly think it'll probably hit around 7, 750. Okay. There are only two movies in history that have made more than uh, $660 million domestic. Okay. One of them's Avatar. Dear God in heaven. And the other one's Star Wars. So okay. you were telling me that you think... $650 million then. Okay, I'm about to say. <laughs> that would put it just below Titanic. I want and, that to beat Titanic like a redhead stepchild. And just below Jurassic World. <laughs> Jurassic World uh, topped off at $652 million domestic. The Avengers, which of course is the movie everyone's going to compare this to, finished at six hundred and twenty-three million domestic. That's right. it. That's the only ones that have made more than six hundred million. Because the next one down is Dark Knight at five thirty-four. I'll say this much: if the, if Justice League hits six fifty, I will go a month without saying anything bad about Zack Snyder. Oh, we got that. We got that. He almost spit out his water there. Oh, man. <laughs> we do have this on record. We have, so. Yeah, it, mark the tape. Mark the tape. There we go. So the top 10 highest grossing movies domestically of all time, The Phantom Menace at 474, Finding Dory at 486, Beauty and the Beast this year, 503, Rogue One somehow made $532 million at the box office, then Dark Knight, Avengers, Jurassic World, Titanic, Avatar, Force yeah. Awakens. And that's why Felicity Jones autograph and picture cost four hundred and fifty yeah, no dollars. <laughs> so here we go. So in order to beat Beating the Beast, it's gotta make more than five hundred and three million dollars domestic. I don't think it's gonna get there. I don't. I, I don't I just I don't see it. My my official prediction domestically for Justice League will be three hundred and seventy five million dollars. Three hundred and seventy five million dollars. All right. That would put it on the list write it about spider-man 2 return of the king area spider-man 2 was didn't have a subtitle no it's just called spider-man 2 yeah yeah so so. spider-man 2 return of the king well, yeah. well return of the king <laughs> <laughs> yes it is not spider-man 2 return of the king but that's that one spidey uh, peter and spidey right uh no it's, oh god <laughs> i'm in that movie by the way so oh okay. that's the rumor <laughs> so how, how far confirmed rumors <laughs> so you, I know, Goose, you said you believe that Beauty of the Beast will be knocked off by Justice League. Yes. Minion, do you think it's going to happen? I don't think so. I don't either. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the DC. I love DC as much as the next guy. And you're the next guy. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> but uh, I, I just don't see it happening. All right. So Spider-Man Homecoming. Let's call our shot here. Predictions. We're, when we're talking d- domestic, domestic, 
We're talking domestic. Let's go only opening weekend. Only opening weekend. Only opening weekend. Going to say seventy-five million. Seventy-five mil domestic opening weekend. Minion, mm-hmm. call your shot. Uh, forty-five. Forty-five million. Um, just a just a wild guess. So. Okay, I'm going to call. I'll call a hundred and five million. Oh, can I re- can I re- restate mine? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, seventy. Seven. Right, so you said seventy-five. Uh-huh. You said seventy. I'm yeah. calling a hundred and five. And are we doing prices right rules? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is bragging rights. For okay. Whoever's the closest is bragging rights is next week. Closest without going over, though. Uh, no, 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 no. You can certainly go over if you want to go over. But here's the thing, though, is that um, you know you get bragging rights, so you get to tell Marina Sirtis next week that you were right. Peter won't be here. I won't be here. Okay. Well, we would we would say on on your behalf, okay. but it's not going to happen anyway because I'll be the right one, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh come on we're all having a little fun here so what do you think the best movie of 2017 will be Let, let's get into the opinion part what's the best movie so far to date i still have to say wonder woman but what do you think will be the best movie for the whole year when it's all said and done not saying star wars <laughs> not um, not star wars not, not star wars that's not it, fair so far I, I, I have to say wonder woman all right goose justice league you know i'm i'm really looking forward to valerian yeah, if, that if, does look good, if the story it? and characters are half as good as the visuals, I think that could be the best movie of the year. I'm really looking forward to Valerian. I really, really am. All right, well, that'll go ahead and wrap it up here. If you want to tweet at us, please do at GYGO underscore official. Colossal. Oh, Colossal's really Somebody good, too. That's it, right. Yeah. You can shoot me an email personally at Dave the Host at GetYourGeekOn.org. For Goose, for Minion, and for myself, I want to thank our sponsors, Southtown Games, Laser Legend, and The Mailing Spot. I want to thank you for listening. May all your hits be crits, and be sure to get your geek on every single day. Good night, everybody.